The Game Boy Advance was the well-needed update for the original Game Boy. Enhanced graphics, sound capabilities, what have you. That said, it wound up being a system that I very much enjoyed playing. I spent quite a bit of time with it, and I figured today I would talk about some of my personal favorite games on the system. Hello, welcome to SCPO Steel Gaming. My name is Sean O'Donnell, and today I'm going to count down my top 10 personal favorite Game Boy Advance games. Now, this list is going to be different from my previous video I did where I showed off games in my collection. These are games that I have specifically played that are my personal favorites. These may not always be top quality games, but these are games that I got a lot of enjoyment out of. So, with that said, let's jump right in. At number 10, we have Super Dodgeball Advance. This was one of the first games I picked up for the Game Boy Advance. And there's not much to say about it. It's an enhanced version of the classic game Super Dodgeball. This game is so much fun. You basically try to beat out your opponents, three-on-three -three battles, what have you. You have crazy moves and abilities. The countries are well represented, stuff like that. It's fairly tongue-in-cheek. And I love it. It's just, it's a great enhanced version of a classic game. And to me, it's well worth playing, even today. At number nine, we have Dragon Ball Advance. So, the Dragon Ball franchise got a lot of representation on the Game Boy Advance. More specifically, Z on. But Dragon Ball Advance is a retelling of the original series. So you are put into the role of Goku, and you have to traverse through various stages, fighting enemies, and so forth. The boss battles are done in a fighting mode style, which was pretty cool. This game is an action platformer with some fighting segments as well as some shooter segments, I guess is the best way to put it. You'll be flying on the Nimbus, you have to fight through enemies, stuff like that. This game is so well done. Very underrated. Lots and lots of fun. And once you beat the game, you can unlock Krillin and play through the game as him as well. So it's got that going for it as well. Of all the Dragon Ball games on the system, this is probably the best one. And is a game that's well worth playing, especially if you love a good action platform. At number eight, we have Double Dragon Advance. This game is a remake of Double Dragon, or an enhanced version of it. It tells the same original story. The Shadow Gang has captured Billy's girlfriend, Marin, and he and his brother Jimmy have to go through and basically try and rescue her. This game takes elements throughout the series, characters, bosses, stuff like that, and creates a much larger, richer experience for it. It is so much fun, and I had a blast with it. It's, it's incredibly well done, and it's well worth your time. At number seven, we have Wolfenstein 3D. Wolfenstein 3D is the grandpappy of the first-person shooter genre and has appeared on so many different systems over the years. This port has 
pretty much all the stages from the original campaign, all six chapters. Weapons, enemies, blood, so forth. It, my only criticism for this game is there's no music. That's my biggest criticism for this game. The game runs well. It's still a lot of fun to play. And to see it run on the Game Boy Advance is quite the interesting sight. Is it the best version to play? No, of course not. But I sunk a lot of time into this particular port, and I was very happy with it. At number six, we have Metroid Fusion. So Metroid Fusion is the fourth entry in the Metroid series, and it takes a little bit of a darker turn compared to the previous entries, which don't get me wrong. The Metroid series has always been kind of a dark, gloomy sci-fi series. But this one really ups the suspense factor. So the story on this one is with the extinction of the Metroids, a parasite known as SAX has emerged on planet Zebs and is running roughshod over things. When your suit gets infected, you they have to force it off you and find a way to combat this new threat. To do so, you are given a new suit that is merged with Metroid DNA. This is a very great entry with some really amazing and at times disturbing bosses. And like I said, the suspense factor is incredible, especially when the SAX in your armor is chasing after you. It can get pretty intense. And for that, I mean, it just makes for an amazing experience. At number five, we have Mega Man Battle Network 2. The Battle Network franchise is a completely different beast from the classic Mega Man series and the Mega Man X series. This one puts you in the role of Lan, a young boy who uses an online avatar, or as I call in this game, Net Navis, known as Mega Man. And you basically have to go through and combat viruses and try to protect the people that you love. This game is really cool. It takes elements of the original series, character names, stuff like that, and creates a isometric action RPG experience. The battles are random, and they're done on a grid basis. Your attacks, while you have your main buster, your power-ups and stuff like that are all based around chips that you utilize in order to basically fight. This game requires a lot of strategy, and it can get pretty challenging, but I've had an incredible amount of fun with it. Unfortunately, the latter sequels decide to go down the Pokemon route of splitting the games into two separate cards in order to divvy out chips so you have to trade and stuff like that, which I didn't care for, but this was probably one of the best entries. At number four, we have Fire Pro Wrestling. So the Fire Pro Wrestling series is a long-running wrestling franchise that was predominantly in Japan. This was one of the first entries to make its way stateside, and it's just an incredibly fun game. You have a huge amount of 
creativity when it comes to creating your own wrestlers. Of course, they have stock characters and stuff like that that you can utilize. It's heavily influenced on Japanese wrestling, and you have a lot of different gameplay modes that you can do, from singles to tag matches, steel cages, and even death matches, which are a lot of fun to do. You can quite literally create whoever you want in this game. It's got a huge amount of moves to choose from. When I picked up the my original copy, somebody, because it was a rental, somebody had gone through and they created like Hulk Hogan, Ric Flair, Undertaker, so many classic wrestlers, and they looked just like them, had their moves, everything. It was awesome. And pound for pound, I'd say it's easily one of the best wrestling games I've ever played. At number three, we have The Legend of Zelda, The Minish Cap. This was the third entry of the Capcom trilogy of Legend of Zelda games, and it was their best one. In this game, Link has to go through and shrink down into the Minish world in order to pretty much help save Hyrule from the threat of a new villain known as Vaddy. You wear a... Your hat is actually a wizard that will talk to you. He tends to be very sarcastic and condescending, but... It just makes for an interesting experience. This game is just ripe with creativity. Taking normal enemies and making them into dangerous bosses because of your size. And it's also got some unique power-ups to go along with it. This is a game that doesn't get as much love as it should. And that's a shame because it is a phenomenally great game. At number two, we have Castlevania Aria of Sorrow. So, when Konami brought the Castlevania series to the Game Boy Advance, they decided to continue the trend of the Metroidvania titles that they started with Symphony of the Night. Of their efforts, Aria of Sorrow proved to be the best in regards to both story and gameplay. The story in this one is in... The semi-distant future, a solar eclipse has risen, and you are transported into it only to find out that you're in Dracula's castle. Your character's name is Soma Cruz. For whatever reason, you have the ability to absorb monster souls and use them at your disposal. You then must traverse through the castle to figure out why you have this power and what exactly is going on. Aria of Sorrow is its an amazing game. You have a wide, wide variety of weapons and power-ups that you can gather, items, armor, what have you. The bosses... While a lot of them are your Castlevania-esque tropes, they're still memorable. There's a lot of fun to be have with this one. I love the soul system. I love the huge amounts of variety that you can get from utilizing it and trying to figure out the best abilities to use at your disposal. And... This game's got also one of the best twists in the entire franchise. Really, in regards to the series, this is one of the highest notes in it, and it didn't get much better than this. At number one, and my top 
personal favorite Game Boy Advance game, Final Fantasy V Advance. So, Final Fantasy V is one of the... I guess in a way, it's kind of one of the black sheep of the Final Fantasy series. In regards to the 16-bit entries, it was never localized during its original run. And we initially didn't get to see it until the PS1 with anthologies. But the Game Boy Advance port, to me, was the best effort for this particular title. So you not only got the original game in all its glory, you got bonus dungeons, new job classes that you can utilize, and so forth. This game is very underrated and deserves a lot of love. The story itself is a little on the lighter side, but still has quite a few very memorable moments. And to me, it also offers one of the best villains in the series, even if it's more of a sub-boss character in Gilgamesh. And he's got one of the best themes in all of the Final Fantasy games. If I was to do a top 10 Final Fantasy theme list, he would be like number two or three. It's just that good. I love the job class system in this. It's easy to get a hang of. It's fun to experiment with. And it's just very well done. And like I said, this one's a little more on the lighter side in regards to the story, which is refreshing. And it's just an overall great experience. And honestly, this is, like I said, to me, this is the best version of the game to play. So that, my friends, is my top 10 personal favorite Game Boy Advance games. So, what do you think? Were you surprised by some of the picks on here? What are your personal favorite games on the system? Let me know. Like I said, the system's got so much diversity to it, and there's just so much fun to be had with it. So, there you go. Let me know what you thought. Please like, share, and subscribe. I'll see you next time.